Okay, a wise word there. When you say one thing, a wise person understands uh, three. That is what we call a reading between the lines there. You say one thing, the wise man understands three. Reading in between the lines there. And indeed, are uh, using your wisdom. The program is still this morning on ITV on this uh, All Fool's Day, April uh, 1st. As we uh, I said earlier, somewhat a very nice day. Uh, some persons are already celebrating their birthday. Uh, some persons are doing some other things. Some are making plans on a Monday morning. Everyone is hitting back to work. And somehow, those who are pan Africanists, we always tell you that when uh, 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 April 1st comes, they are actually somehow with some mixed feelings here. Because it was uh, one man that was born on April 1st that sat down over uh, that conference when Africa was placed on the table uh, like a map and pursued. Uh, among European powers during the scramble and partition of Africa in December 1884 and January 1885 uh, as the Berlin Conference that was chaired by the man born on All Fools Day, Sir Otto von Bismarck of Germany. Those are all history. Let's keep that somehow. We are Africans and we are happy we are proud of who we are. And the, the new month is on. Text messages are everywhere. Everyone is excited that, look, we've got a new month here. But it's time for us to talk aviation. The airports are still very busy anyway this morning. Airports across the world are very busy. Us are not very busy airports. You know, when you go to our airport, you can easily sit down, ask questions. Uh, you don't, the flights are, are trickling in. But when you go to some airport, it appears everyone is in a hurry, running around. And you just need to be very smart or else you just stand there and get lost in the midst of a big uh, booming market uh, in the airport. Terminal. All of these are uh, making aviation sweet. As it is on this program, uh, aviation of the, we'll be looking at a very key issue uh, this morning. When you are flying and you are not, for us who are not regular flyers anyway, we fly but we don't fly all the time. Uh, but some persons who fly daily, they are very regular flyers. Whenever anything happened to that industry, they indeed catch cold and they feel, oh, I would have just been the next victim, particularly when it comes to uh, air crashes here. So this morning, uh, if we can have, we will be discussing with our guest, our regular guest. Uh, he has been around, he loved aviation so much. Uh, that's the clip on the screen there. Uh, Mr. Godwin N. E. K. Uh, you can contact him on those phone numbers uh, on the screen. Uh, the email address is there. The website is there. The YouTube channel is there. Uh, Twitter, you can follow him through. He has come to love aviation and love it so passionately and somewhat in the biblical when they ask someone why are you doing all of this he said the zeal of my father's house have consumed me he loved this and loved it so passionately and we have him in the studio very wonderful morning sir Hi, good morning very Mark. wonderful how, morning how was your weekend we talk about the weather is wow. hot it's mm. quite hot uh someone when yeah. it gets hot some i don't know what happened the <laughs> air conditioning facilities hardly work so effectively they can't uh, work uh, effectively uh, with the kind of heat you have uh, when you there. when you take your bath mm. you have uh, some Two, three minutes ago, mm -hmm. subsequently it disappeared. And now the heaters are already turned off completely. Uh, you want to get some cold water coming from the tap. Mm -hmm. And you just turn it on and discover that the water itself is warm. It's hot. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yeah. uh, the good news is that um, the weatherman says all, all these will end uh, before the end of the first week of uh, April. April so well. And I will begin to see some rains and begin to see some you know, very uh, clement weather. Uh, Clement in sense of uh, temperature, but not necessarily in sense of aviation. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, so the aviation winning, the one pilot. Yes, yeah, the, the NCAA the chief. Yes, the NCAA chief uh, uh, warned that uh, from the information from the weatherman, um, uh, it, it's going to be gusty, it's going to be rainy, and uh, it's, it's you know it, it's time for. Um, pilots to be more careful and uh, ensure that no, they don't take any chances. If you're if you're not sure, don't commence that landing. If you're not sure, don't commence that takeoff. I mean, um, we 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 have to be sure that we do what is right all the time and keep our passengers safe. And, uh, okay, and as somewhat happy. passengers, yeah. if you are like me, who got some uh, landing and takeoff phobia, <laughs> I don't like those two period in flying. Uh, I don't think I come to right. like it. I love cruise, uh, mm. but I don't like takeoff. I don't like yeah. landing. I, 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 I love tanks. <laughs> okay, quickly, uh, well, what are we looking well, at? Uh, the worldwide grounding of Boeing 737 MAX 8. But some countries part, have not part one. Some countries, but most of the major, major 
you know, nations of the world, including our day in Nigeria, is either grounded them or ban them from overflying their airspace. And so I uh, want to look at, uh, at this once again and take, uh, take a look at the, you know, what uh, transpired and what brought us to where we are. And then uh, we are doing part one today, titled The World, uh, it's right there on the screen. That's true. The World Wide Crowding of 0.737 Max 8. I thought it was Max 8. Just uh, Max 8. No, it, well, it's, it's the Max series, but the one that, that we are paying attention to this morning is Max 8, uh, involved in those two accidents that slaughtered about 346 people in total. Yeah, so um, let's uh, hit the ground running um, uh, okay, if, uh, have, uh, from uh, have clip, one. clip one. Let's let's get on with it very quickly. Okay, we're, let's clip one, we're, yeah. we're there. Wonderful. Uh, the worldwide grounding of Boeing 737 MAX series, you can see now we're talking about MAX series in, in, in the right up. It's no more news. What's still trending news is why two Boeing 737 MAX 8 brand new aircraft crashed within five months, killing all 346, 346 people on board both airplanes. On October 29, 2018, Lion Air Flight 610 traveling from Sokano Hatta International Airport, Jakarta, Indonesia to Departi Amir Airport, Panga, um, uh, Penang, Indonesia crashed into the Java Sea 12 minutes after takeoff, killing all 189 passengers and crew on board. On March 10, 2019, barely five months, um, Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, traveling from Addis Ababa, Bol Air International Airport, Ethiopia, to Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Nairobi, Kenya, crashed six minutes after takeoff, killing all 157 passengers and crew on board. Let's run quickly to okay, clip two. two. I mean, the, 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 the time duration for the first one is 12 minutes. The second one was six minutes. Half the time. Half the time. <laughs> Very sad, isn't it? In, in the two accidents, both aircraft were less than four months old. It brings you to what I always say to you, that air, airplanes are as old as uh, their missed checks and as new as their checks sincerely done. So it's not about age. So in the two accidents, both aircraft were less than four months old. Satellite tracking data showed both aircraft had similar flight profiles. They pitched down multiple times and experienced extreme fluctuations in upward and downward speed while their pilots struggled for control. The pilots of both planes also radioed requesting to return to their takeoff airports. Based on the shared cost for the accidents, the anti-stall flight control system, maneuvering characteristics Augu augmentation system, MCAS, installed in the planes quickly got attention of investigators. Um, if you come back to us very quickly, let's describe to our viewers uh, uh, what this is saying. When we say satellite tracking data showed both aircraft has similar flight profiles, the pitched down multiple times and experience extreme fluctuations. That is to say, this plane haven't gotten to, you know, to, to a point where normally pilots will reduce the pitch and then start getting airspeed. What they found was this, that, this, that, and then the check-in and this and that. That's what happened, you know, during that, um, during that flight. And pilots continued to struggle, struggle until, uh, until they, they, lost, they lost the battle and the, the planes dished into the terrain. Um, uh, clip three. Let's run to clip three quickly. That's clip three. Yes. Um, March 11, 2019, Ethiopian Airlines announced it had grounded its fleet of 737 MAX 8 planes effective from March 10, 2019. That was uh, 
uh, right from that day, you know, it was in the morning that the accident took place. So right from that tent, uh, it took effect that the, 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 they were grounding all their max, some for some, um, some for some max eight. Followed quickly by China Civil Aviation Administration citing its zero tolerance policy for any safety hazards became the first government authority to ground its 737 MAX 8 aircraft. From the 13th March 2019, Nigeria and other countries and airlines around the world either grounded or prohibited the aircraft from flying in their airspace. The USA Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, initially claimed it had not received any evidence to justify taking action against the 737 MAX. That's understandable. It's, it's their product. product. And so they've got to defend as much as they, you know, they, 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 uh, they, they could. could. Yes. But on March 11, 2019, President Donald Trump of um, the U.S. Uh, the US, US announced they would ground the aircraft. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, explained that new information about the similarity of the two crashes supported the government's decision. As at the time of the grounding, the worldwide fleet of 737 MAX aircraft series was 387 pieces. That's, that's heavy. That's, very that's much. out of a booking of about 5,000 plus. The, the plane was selling like biscuits. <laughs> because it was heavily advertised and rushed out into the market because of the fuel uh, economy. And so let's move quickly to Cliff 4. Cliff 4. Uh, the, you know, let's That's look at the, the monovering characteristics, the monovering characteristics of the system, system MCAS, uh, the suspected culprit you know, in, the, in, in those two accidents. The MCAS was developed for the 737 MAX to prevent stores in flaps retracted low speed nose up flight. I'll take that again for better understanding. The MCAS was developed for the 737 MAX to prevent stores in flaps retracted, those are the conditions, in flap retracted, low speed, nose up flight. It uses airspeed, altitude, and angle of attack, it's fondly known as AOA, uh, sensor data to compute when a dangerous condition has developed and then trims the aircraft nose down. I'm going to explain this uh, as soon as I finish reading this clip. The leading edge aviation propulsion uh, engines, uh, fondly known as LEAP engines, the full meaning is, of LEAP is leading edge aviation propulsion engines, mounted in Boeing 737 MAX aircraft, are installed higher and further forward than previous 737 models. This change in engine location and the new NASA shape cause an upward pitching moment. I'm going to explain all those to, to our viewers. Don't worry about all these technical, uh, technical terms. Part 25 certification requires that an automatic nose down mechanism must be in place to ensure that the plane is safe for human use. Boeing employed the MCAS as a solution to that change. Come back to us quickly. Let's show our viewers you know, something that this is talking about. It says, by the way, uh, my dear viewers, this is actually a Max 8 miniature. Take a look. 737, take a look. The winglet. And then take a look, the, the mounting of the, of the engine. Do not worry about the fact that this one comes with a turboprop engine rather than the, the, the uh, uh, proper, you know, uh, leap engine. But the mounting is exactly what is, is the issue as, as, you find, as you find in this one. You can see how this engine is, you know, popped out. That is the, that's what we mean by 
uh, 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 the, the leading edge uh, leap engines mounted in Boeing 737 MAX aircraft are installed higher and further forward than previous 737 models. In the previous 737 models, the, the, the engine mounting you know, stopped for, at, at this point. But look at how long this has gone off forward. And so it gives this plane, each time you put power, what it does is that it, it gives this plane what they call uh, a pitching, uh, 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 you know, moment, nose up, nose up pitching moment. That's what we mean by uh, this nose up pitching moment. All right. So that's what we are. That's what we are talking about, viewers. Let's move very quickly to clip five, because um, we'll soon be done. That's clip five now. Uh, the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system. That's right. Continues. continues. That's right. Depending on airspeed and altitude, the MCAS activates without notice to the pilot. Do you hear that? When the angle of attack AOA ex exceeds a set limit, it will just bypass the pilot and, uh, and, and do his job. But it turned out it wasn't really, you know, the, the software wasn't as intelligent uh, as required to keep people safe. The system can be temporarily deactivated when a pilot trims the aircraft using a switch okay. on the control column. Come back to us, let me, and that's a leap engine, uh, mock, the mock-up of a, a leap engine. Mm -hmm. The special type of you know, engine that will give you, it has a higher bypass ratio than the older uh, version of the, of the jet engines, and of course, m more power, so higher speed, less fuel, uh, uh, and that's what um, commercial airlines are looking for, uh, a lot of savings and a lot of profit. You know, that's why um, the LEAP you know, sold out, 5,000 plus, and only 387 delivered. That's at the time these accidents began. So, um, uh, 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 the button that you can switch it off. Yeah. So, I'd like to explain to our viewers uh, this, this issue that is creating problems. Okay. In, an, in a normal autopilot, as you, as you take off and get to above 5,000 feet above sea level, once uh, having set all your flight parameters to take you to your destination right on the ground, as soon as you get up to 5,000, you turn on your your autopilot, and the pilot does nothing other than cross his legs, take a look at the, uh, at the instrument panel, drink his coffee, chat with his uh, mate, the, the first officer, and, and the engine, I mean, um, and his engineer, and the plane is doing his job. So, as that's going on, you notice that uh, the, the, the control column, or the, you know, some call it yoke, some will call it joystick, whatever you call it, they're also, they're also correct. You will notice that it, it will be it will be moving this way, you know, uh, controlled by the autopilot. But if for any reason the pilot suspects anything and holds his control column and resists the movement of the autopilot, the autopilot nicely and immediately disengages and gives back the control of the airplane to the pilot. But in the case of MCAS. MCAS was such a very stubborn software. You would only turn it off by a little trimming knob. Depending on the model of the airplane, the older airplanes will have these uh, trimming. Uh, what we mean by what we mean by trimming is this 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 uh, uh, horizontal you know membranes which you know form your your elevator. You know. If, if, if he pushes in a positive position like this, wave hits it and tips up the nose and points, I mean, tips up the tail and points down the nose. If he moves in a negative uh, uh, position, uh, the, uh, the wing hits it and then pushes down the tail of the airplane and points it up. So that's why we say that the elevators give you your pitch down and pitch, pitch up. Okay. So um, uh, what we are looking at with the with the MCAS is uh, the software. As soon as he knows, he notices uh, a high angle of attack 
with uh, you know flaps retracted you know on low speed what it simply does once the plane achieves the, the parameter set which the sensors mounted somewhere here you know will notice it kicks in and then pushes the elevator into a, uh, a positive position pushing out the tail of the airplane and therefore pointing down the nose in order to to uh, get the aircraft flying once again level and uh, gaining airspeed and uh, running away from a stall. That, that was what the MCAS was designed to do. Unfortunately, unfortunately, the MCAS wasn't as intelligent as was required. It would kick in to put, point your nose down, but occasionally failed to kick out to leave you flying level. And so those two airplanes just went down, all the way down, and all the way and the down. Pilots help. And the pilots couldn't help because they had no information at the time. They had no information about how to disengage the MCAS. They, they didn't even know that um, because it wasn't in the manual uh, at the time. But let's move to clip six so that we can see more of uh, what, what went wrong. Uh, Boeing's false judgment on the efficacy of MCAS. The MCAS receives input from only one of the two angle of attack sensors mounted on the aircraft's exterior. I have, uh, I have shown you, you know, where it's usually mounted. Okay? This instantly renders it as a mechanism with a single point of failure. You, uh, you remember I had taught you the single point of failure you know, way back in the past when we were doing with uh, instruments. Um, uh, it, it, it simply means that mechanism that has only one chance. If anything get, goes wrong, that's it. As against having multiple points of failure, where if this one goes wrong, the other one is available to, to, to help you know, the mechanism running. So uh, you listen to what we're saying now about the, the nature of MCAS as as at the time these crashes were taking place, maybe they are making changes right now. The MCAS receives input from only one of the two angle of attack sensors mounted on the aircraft's exterior. This instantly renders it as a mechanism with a single point of failure status. What's more, Boeing and the FAA, that is the American uh, Federal Aviation Administration, decided the angle of attack reading and the um, angle of attack disagree a lot features were not critical for safe operation and could therefore be considered optional. This is money game, uh, Arthur. Money game. The, the designers knew that there was a problem with this airplane with a uh, you know, nose up pitching moment. They, 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 they configured um, uh, what's it called? Uh, the um, uh, they configured the uh, MCAS in such a way that as soon as he noticed it, it will kick in and do it, do his job. All right, they knew all those, but then they said, "Listen," they said to themselves, and I agree with the FAA. Listen, uh, listen, this this is good to go. Uh, we don't need to make any noise about it. We don't need to tell anyone this uh, software will do its job. And if anybody needed to have extra alert, you, you pay extra money for them to install a possibility of you knowing that your plane was about to start or, or was having issues with the MCAS. Can you see? So those who paid, I had had somebody in one of the TV uh, uh, programs asking a question. Why is it that it was only around Africa and, and, and other nations that these planes were falling down? They were flown in the U.S. Why was it that um, you know, the U.S. pilots were not having you know, issues with the airplane? Now the answers are coming out. The answers are coming out. Boeing was offering these as extras. If you wanted an alert system, you pay more. And they will supply you a model with uh, awesome. an alert, you know, system. So we've gotten this, you know, right. And then uh, uh, more reason uh, I continue to urge Boeing to own up and take responsibility 
and do what they have to do to resolve all these issues. So, um, uh, Boeing and FAA decided that the, the uh, Anglo attack reading and Anglo attack disagree a lot. Features were not critical for safe uh, operation and could therefore be considered optional. As a matter of fact, Boeing charged extra for these alerts. As a result of the crashes of Lion Air Flight 610 and Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, soon after takeoff, technical experts implicated MCAS. Based on these accidents, Boeing announced a planned software upgrade that notifies pilots of a sense of failure. This is a clear case of medicine after death. Yeah, now they are willing to give it free. But before the accidents, it was an extra option that if you wanted, you, you paid money for. Money game. So let's get to uh, uh, the last clip, clip seven. Next clip, seven. We'll see what this MCAS is all about. Take a look at the screen and you see what, what uh, the, the maneuvering characteristics augmentation system is all about. You know, um, you, you, you can see this, uh, uh, the other smaller size plane with the arrows showing you um, how the MCAS will activate your elevator into a positive position, tipping up your tail. You can see the arrow going up, yeah. tipping up your tail, and therefore pushing down the, uh, the nose of the plane for a level flight. Okay, so um, uh, my, my dear viewers, you can, you can take a closer look at uh, the photograph and read all the, the MCAS moves the horizontal stabilizer trim upward at 0.27 degrees uh, per second, up to 2.5 degrees and then 9.26 seconds at a time. So each time the, the MCAS kicked in, it kicked, it's designed to kick in for nine point, uh, a total of 9.6 seconds at a time, gradually moving the elevator into positive position in order to bring down the nose of the airplane. And then uh, angle of attack is sufficiently lowered. Uh, pilots override with manual train. So if pilots had been informed that, and they knew that the only way to override MCAS was using your, your knob, they would have been doing them, you know, uh, or rather those accidents probably would not have taken place because those pilots would have known how to quickly disengage MCAS, take back hold of your airplane, pull up, and, uh, and get the plane off a diving mode. Unfortunately, those pilots had no information and had no well, knowledge. Did they, 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 they not go on a test with a simulator? Well, uh, remember, um, Boeing never had the MCAS in the manual. So nobody even knew he was there. And the pilots were never, uh, you know, uh, until those accidents, they were not trained about should this uh, system misbehave, yeah, what this is what you must do. Uh, naturally, a pilot trained with the autopilot system, as soon as the plane you know, start misbehaving, what, what they will do is to quickly get grab of their con control, you know, try to take charge, and not, you know, the normal uh, autopilot would disconnect if you did that, all right? But the MCAS would not disconnect. And so, what they knew was doing what they were used to, you know, holding and pulling up, you know, and, but nobody told them that they needed to do a little manual trimming with the, with the trimming knob, you know, uh, and, and then that would uh, disconnect the MCAS and give, them, uh, and give them control. The pilots around the world are just getting to know all, all these. And that's why I call it messing after that. You know, 346, you know, human souls being, being slaughtered unnecessarily. Uh, uh, so take, show us one of those other pictures so that our viewers will just um, have fun and take a look at some of the photos of the, uh, that is a, that's a typical um, uh, Max 8. You can see the engine popping yeah. out that's giving Forward. it that, uh, that you know, that. Up, up, upward uh, pitch moment. It's, it's, it's actually, this particular one is actually on that upward pitch moment, uh, almost exceeding the limit of uh, angle of attack. Must. Yeah, uh, show us the next one. So as you see, it, uh, that's a typical uh, leap engine. Uh, but this time around, this one is covered with uh, a nozzle in order to reduce uh, noise. You can see that the engine is stuck deep into the nozzle. 
that is, that's a, that's a cover wrapping around the, uh, the engine for noise control. So um, you, can, and you can see how you can see the the length popping out uh, forward. For the normal 73, the oldest and very trusted 737 had engines that were a little top back backwards. And somewhat you know, uh, close and, to the, uh, uh, under the wings? Yes, right under the wings. wings okay. and, and so those weren't giving, uh, you know, the pitching moment. Uh, I, guess, I guess that is it. Um, if you have uh, one or two questions, um, I could take uh, your question and then uh, okay, but we'll let, get out of this studio. Let's hope that uh, the, the world will follow through. But in this now, though it's yeah. in part one, we'll be doing part two. Uh, uh, oh, this is part one, the yes. Monday, the Monday after today. Yes. The question part is... Part two will give us more if, information. If the MCAS is the problem mm. and the world is getting to know this, mm. why can't the world quickly prepare so that they could solve this on time and this sweet plane, because there was someone told me that this is like a dream plane. It's not just a conventional plane you jump into. Even Mr. Digital. President of the United States of America, President Donald Trump, tweeted once and said, listen, these machines are getting too complicated and too computerized. <laughs> that the simpler, traditional, older models were more reliable and, 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 and better that we have over-computerized these this machines and they, they are not safe anymore. <laughs> but, but sometimes you look yeah. at it, 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 it's very sweet. When you, when you fly in this plane, mm. you know, you just, the comfort is massive. The facilities are indeed very massive. And yeah. uh, when you get a cruise, you even take off and landing. It's very beautiful. Yeah, because of the, those, those, those landing, computer controls. It's, it's very, very yeah. So sometimes yeah. when some plane lands, the whole thing you have to just shake and... Uh, uh, those persons who are religious will be doing the prayer session here. <laughs> when plane is landing, everyone drops their book. Uh, you start to see Bible, Islamic bead being brought out, more corners, and people start to pray. Well, I must uh, correct like an cruise. impression. I must correct an impression. Uh, some of those hard landings that we receive in this part of the world is all because of the, uh, the kind of the instrument landing system we have installed. Um, if you have the latest uh, category 3C of the instrument landing system, that will bring you to the zero point, even when there is total zero visibility. It brings you into the threshold and, and, and helps you land nicely. You won't feel those kind of pressure. Well, you see, the other lower categories that we use here, they, 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 they guide you into the runway to a particular level, and then the pilot uses his skill and knowledge to now bring the airplane to touch down. You know, so uh, that is what the difference is. But some, some, uh, yeah. some. When you, when mm. you, when you land and touch down, you're gonna like it. Right. You will not even know you are fully down. It's all about skill. Just, you just it's gradually touch mm. down. It moves. Uh, the wings are out. <laughs> the brakes and everything. Okay, yeah. thank you very yeah, much right. for coming. Right. And by right. next week we'll be we'll be mm. looking at this. We're still within a Max Seven Three. Sorry, a Boeing Seven Three Seven uh, Max Eight plane. We are looking at it from the uh, two crashes we had before. Quite uh, unfortunate there. If you don't lost person or you've not flew this airline before, you won't. Like I said earlier, when uh, the Ethiopian airline crashed, I, I caught cold. I caught cold not because uh, persons died. Let me be very realistic here. I caught cold because. I had enjoyed that airline recently, and I would have been a victim. <laughs> oh, yeah, anybody, anybody can be, be anybody. You know, it's all, it's all a question of it's a game of chance, and um, it's, uh, it's it, we should actually do everything possible to make sure that these machines don't fall off the skies. I still maintain that they are faithful machines. They fall off the skies because human operators can be unfaithful and dishonest. Imagine, for 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 instance, that Boeing wasn't seeking to make more money from, uh, you know, putting alerts in the system. Imagine for one second that Boeing came out all clean, announcing to the world what it had in the, in the system and how to disengage it and, uh, a, the, the, you know, a warning that uh, those sensors might misbehave, but if, if, if they do misbehave, do this, do that. Just imagine for one second that it wasn't monetized and they came clean. Those pilots would have known what to do and they, those lives would have been saved. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gordon Enike. Thanks for coming on the program. By right. next week, Monday, we'll be seeing uh, part, part two. two. We'll, we'll commence part two here. We'll be looking at all of mm. these. Please, yeah. this knowledge, you need them very much. When you are in the play, you can also be able to talk well and also make an informed contribution and also know 
what you what, what you in because it's sometimes a game of life on the and then finally let's uh, um, ask our pilots to take the counsel of our amiable uh, head of uh, NCAA uh, captain Mukhtar who's um, uh, in, you know one that from this month uh, up until June July that the pilots should be careful we be very careful we don't want crashes on our land. Okay, and those of us, those of us who are there, who are inside the uh, plane as well, uh, you got some uh, thunderstorm when you are going through all of this, you know sometimes you know, there will be turbulence. Uh, try and uh, be strong, be strong. I had my worst turbulence in 2006. Uh, 2006, yes. I know I flew with then Minister Aerofi to Port Harcourt, and we flew, uh, we flew, I think we flew to so, so, if I'm right, Chan -chan one of those two aircraft. Uh, we got so much turbulence and everyone in the plane was shaking and everything was just sleeping and when we came down we had to confront him quickly i said mr minister you were sleeping everyone was shaking he said in their family they hardly cross 40. so he has crossed 40. he was ready to die why will he be afraid when he told us that uh, we really laughed over it here but he was he was really too calm in a play where everyone but that's, is, uh, that's all that makes sense everyone actually. Is, uh, is, in that kind of situation is, 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 is um, fully in panic here yeah, when we touch down mm. we have to just uh, they, yeah. they, they, they allow the lie at least uh, thank you jesus in, that, in actual <laughs> sense in those kind of situations calmness makes more sense than anything else okay thank you very much mr godwin Nikki. let's quickly yeah. uh, end uh, the aviation segment let's take a break when we return from the break the program this morning on itv would we'll continue